Okay, this is Dr. Winkler at the Naperville Animal Clinic, and here is Ryan, and this is Lisa of Naptime Napoleons, who is speaking, even though you don't see me. We're going to go through a regular exam so you know what to expect from your doctor. Take it away. All right, so the first thing we're going to do when we're looking at the kitty is just doing an overall picture. Do we look vibrant? Do we look alert? Um, are, do, are we squidging our eyes shut? Do we look like we're shivering? Does it appear like we're in pain? Just a general idea of how they've been feeling. Uh, and this one looks uh, very vibrant. Eyes are open. He wants to get away. He's exploring. He's looking at things. So that's all very typical for a kitten. So the first thing I'm going to do is um, I go a nose to tail exam. So I'm going to look at his little nose first and I'm looking to make sure that his nostrils are clear, uh, that they're a symmetrical normal size and they look good. I'm taking a look at his eyes. I want to make sure there's no infection, no birth defects, there's no tearing or discharge coming from him. His look nice and clear. It's normal to have a little bit of tears, but they shouldn't be weird colors or a lot of it. Then I'm going to look at his little mouth. I'm going to pull it open. I only get a quick look because they are not, cats don't like to open their mouth voluntarily. Uh, but I'm looking for a dental alignment. The front teeth should line up and the chewing teeth should line up in a scissor pattern. Uh, and they look good to me. I also, when I open his mouth, I check the roof of his mouth to make sure that he doesn't have a hole to his nose or a cleft palate or anything like that. It was all nice and normal in there. Then I'm going to take a look at his little ears here, uh, making sure nothing is swollen, red, he doesn't have a lot of discharge, no evidence of ear mites. His are nice and clean and a normal color. Then I'm going to go ahead and feel his little lymph nodes that live right under his chin, make sure they're small and symmetrical, and they are. Um, I'm going to feel for the same lymph nodes in front of his shoulders, in his armpits, in his groin, on both sides and behind his little kneecap. So those are the most common ones that I can feel. They're all symmetrical, uh, both the same size on every side and every location of his body, uh, and they feel good size to me in general. Um, then I'm just going to kind of gently move my hands down his body, make sure there's no lumps and bumps that shouldn't be there. Uh, when I get to his tummy, I'm going to put a little pressure on it and just feel in some of the organs we can feel in there, like a bladder, some parts of the kidney, uh, the intestines, things like that. I'm also making sure he doesn't act uncomfortable when I press on the stomach, like something hurts or he's got gas pain or anything that a kitten could have. It feels good to me. Uh, then I'm going to go ahead and kind of just work my way down to their hips and knees, making sure that the skeletal system and joints are developing as they should. And He's very normal for a kitty of his size and breed. Uh, I'm going to run my hand through his hair, looking for things like rashes, um, cuts, sores, parasites, fleas, ticks, things like that that. Uh, just kind of a general all over. Make sure there's nothing weird. That looks good to me. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and have Ryan turn him so I can look at his tummy. And we're looking for anything like a hernia um, from the, the uh, umbilical cord. His feels good. Nothing like that. Make sure there's no other yeah. mystery hernias or abnormalities on his tummy. And then finally we're going to take a quick look at his, at his genitalia to first off oftentimes make sure they are the gender we think they are. Sometimes that can be a little elusive in the beginning. And also feel for testicle development. Uh, so all is good with him. Alrighty. No one likes that. Uh, then we're going to listen to his lungs and heart last. And so I listen to the lungs along the back in the chest and then we listen most easily for the heart in the kind of the armpit area. So we'll be quiet for a second. I'm trying hard to hold it still but I can't. <laughs> All right, so his heart sounds very good. Uh, lungs are nice and clear. I don't detect any murmurs or any indication that he has early onset heart problems or anything like that. Uh, so all in all, he apparently is a healthy kitten. Uh, and that's just a basic general exam for you. Obviously, if we would have found anything that was questionable, we would come back to that and investigate a little further, possibly do diagnostic tests if needed. All right, thank you very much. and. Now, there's Pac-Man and Ryan, and we're going to give a vaccination on them now. This is a two-person vaccination, and I was scared to death to do it for years, but once Dr. Winkler was so kind to teach me, 
I saw how simple it was and I would do it with your vet the first time at least, if not more than once. When she puts the needle in, you can actually feel the liquid going in, but she's going to show you the procedure and I'll start hogging the voice that you can't mm -hmm. see and let her take it. Alrighty, so I just drew up the vaccine. Um, one poke into the vial, don't do multiple pokes, you'll dull your needle and hurt your kitten. Uh, and I want to make sure that I get all the extra air out of the vaccine when I pull it up. So you'll just make sure your liquid reaches the top of the metal part of the needle so it's inside the needle hub and then you're ready to go. Uh, I'm going to have Ryan position the kitty because I want to give this in the shoulder area. So he's going to do a mama cat scruff around the neck and I'm going to feel for those shoulder blades because that's where I want to give. I don't want to give it any higher or lower. Uh, then I want to position my needle with the bevel up. That's the flat side of the needle. If you look down to the bevel, you can actually see the needle hole and that means you have the right side up. Then I'm going to go ahead and pinch the skin, making a tent so I can pull it away from the body and be darn sure that I'm not poking it into the muscle or the bone or uh, the spinal cord or anything like that. Uh, then I'm going to head in at a 45 degree angle, degree angle, excuse me, not up and down and definitely not through the skin into my assistant. He would not like that very much. So we'll go ahead and look at that tent again. And it's going to be a little tough first going through the skin, but you're going to feel some give and then a little pop when the needle goes in. I'm going to go ahead and pull back on the syringe. If I get too much air or blood, I'm going to want to reposition and put a new needle on. Then I'm going to go ahead, and this one was good, so I'm going to go ahead and give the vaccine. Just keep pushing all the plunger down until all your liquid is out. Then I'm going to remove the needle and put my finger over the hole, make sure that none of the vaccine comes out. Give it a little gentle rub to soothe it, and then tell Pac-Man how amazingly brave he was. He's a good boy. And thank you so much. This one's going on YouTube. Oh, so <laughs> this will work out very well. Everyone from Keeping Up with the Napoleons and all the Napoleon Nation says thank you. You're welcome. <laughs>